Here's another Epsilon Delta proof. This time it's from this again. Same page, page 92, it's exercise 20. So this proof is somewhat more difficult than the previous one. It requires a new concept. So the absolute value of A less than B is equivalent to A being between minus B and B. The absolute value of X minus A less than B is equivalent to minus B less than X minus A less than B which is equivalent to A minus B less than X less than A plus B. Okay. We're going to use this concept to restrict the value of delta so we can eliminate a component when trying to find delta essentially. So we're introducing some extra information to make the proof work. Okay. Same as last video, I'm going to show you how to find delta in terms of epsilon and then I'll uh, yeah, I'll go through the proof. Okay. This might take a little bit longer than the other one. So this is what we're trying to prove. The limit as x tends to 2 of x cubed equals 8. So we already know that x cubed is a continuous function. So the limit will equal the value of the function that the value of the function with 2 substituted in. But proving it in terms of the epsilon delta definition is a more interesting approach. Okay, so same as before, we consider the definition. So I'm not going to write it out in full this time, I'm just going to write the implication. So we have 0 less than x minus what x tends to, 2 less than delta, implies absolute value of x cubed minus 8 less than epsilon. Okay, same as before, we'll start with the right hand side of the implication and manipulate it until it looks like the left hand side. Okay. x cubed minus 8 less than epsilon. Okay, so the first thing you want to notice is that this is a difference of two cubes. So the rule for expanding a difference of two cubes is pretty simple, but it depends on the, uh, the sim the, whether this is a plus or a minus. So given that it is a minus, well, so the general rule, the way I remember it, is the mnemonic SOAP. So that stands for same as this, whatever this is, opposite, and then always plus. So if we want to expand this out, we go x, same symbol, minus 2, x squared, opposite, so plus. Now here, it's just x times 2. So, got to memorize that. So 2x plus, and it's just 2 squared, so 4. So if you want to understand that in more detail, I just look up, yeah, difference of two cubes. Okay. So, remember the product, uh, sorry, the, the absolute value of the product is the product of the absolute values. So we get x minus 2x squared 
plus 2x plus 4 less than epsilon and we've already found our x minus the value x tends to okay so now what we've got to do is somehow get rid of this so the way we do that is so remember this is not the proof this is how we find what epsilon is and then we do the proof once we've found that so let's just for the sake of argument suppose delta equals 1 so it probably doesn't equal 1 but we're just going to assume that it does equal 1 for the sake of argument so if delta equals 1 that means this right so what we want to do is we want to use this to find some condition so we can substitute some real number for this quadratic so using that preliminary concept that I introduced at the start let's just take this bit so we get x minus 2 less than 1 is equivalent to x less than 3 less than 1 okay that might be a little bit quick but I would just work it out from the beginning and also look at the Wikipedia page on absolute absolute values it's got this equivalence on there okay so if 1 is less than x is less than 3 x is positive so that's that's good and also we can square this to get the value that x squared would be is between we can also multiply it by 2 to get the value that 2x is and 4 is just a constant so we square it 1 less than x squared less than 9 1 less than 2x less than uh, 2 times 6 cool okay so that's pretty good so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the highest values so 9 and 6 and plug them in here okay. so 9 and 6 okay so essentially what that means is we get well so pretty much just add these together so we get add that to that 2 add this to that x squared plus 2x less than these two added so 9 plus 6 15 add 4 6 19 so we've got an upper and a lower bound for this so that's going to be useful so what we want to do is we want to plug in the upper bound okay so we're gonna replace this with 19 because yeah yeah we're gonna replace it with 19 Okay, cool. So now we get x minus 2 less than epsilon over 19. Okay, it's pretty cool. So now we've actually found our value of delta. So what we're allowed to do, and you'll see in probably Griff's um, like notes, is that we set delta equal to the minimum 
of 1 and epsilon over 19. Why? Because then it will be less than both. So not delta won't be less than both. But 0 will be less than x minus 2 less than delta, which is the minimum of these two. Hence, it's less than... Well, it's less than both of them. So we can use both properties, or both conditions. Okay? So now we do the we do the proof proper. So again, given epsilon greater than zero, let delta equal the minimum of one and epsilon on nineteen. So any value higher than nineteen and maybe even some values lower <laughs> will satisfy the proof. Okay, so let's do the proof. So this means that 0 less than x minus 2 less than 1 and conjunction 0 less than x minus 2 less than epsilon on 19. So from here we can derive that the absolute value of x squared plus 2x plus 4 is less than 19, which is important. And from here, we can derive that 19 times x minus 2 is less than epsilon. And since we've got both of these, conjunction, <laughs> we can see that this must be less than 19. Hence, we can plug this in, replace 19 with this, because this inequality will still hold. So they both imply that x squared plus 2x plus 4 less than x minus 2, less than epsilon. Then from here, you can see that we're going to get x cubed less than, x cubed minus 8 is less than epsilon. So we multiply this out again. Remember the product of absolute values is the absolute value of the product. So you get x cubed minus 8, less than epsilon. And our proof is finished.